Olympian kickboxer. His name is uh, Arthur. I can't even pronounce his last name, but he's a big guy, big strong guy. Uh, record of ten and two, eight knockouts. So now is uh, this morning. I did probably I said like fifteen rounds boxing. Now we're gonna go. It's a six kilometer run or four miles. I do four miles, and then. Um, it's on 2.5 incline, so all uphill the whole time. And then body weight stuff at the end. So just uh, more or less a cool down session to end the day. <laughs> yep, that's about it. Stevie put me through the trenches getting ready for this war. How do you, uh, I know it's early in the camp, we're a month out. Um, how are you feeling about this fight so far? You know, she's gonna be, I got a kind of a, I got a funny feeling it's gonna be like, Tag part two. You know, you got a guy coming from that side of the world, former kickboxer. You know, big, strong. He's out. He's a lot bigger. He's a he's a heavyweight, six five or whatever. So you know, I think it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a war. What have you took? What did you take off your last fight in Cape Breton? The last one was just um, I don't know. I think it was a good dis dis good display that. I could control my emotions while I needed to, you know, like the fight before that I couldn't, I really couldn't, it was from one, the beginning of the fight to the end of the fight was just chaos, this fight was like, you know, after the fight was over I kind of let it out a little bit, but while the fight was happening, you know, I was under control of my emotions and when I'm under control of my emotions in the ring, I'm able to comprehend what my corner's telling me, you know, I can listen and I can execute, but when I'm not under control of my emotions, it's just, it's just like, um, it's just chaos, you know, so, anyway, but that last fight was, that was a good test, and, and I prevailed, so. Like 6.5, 7.5, 8.4. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this is the good one. And then incline, he said 2.5s. See it, like Stevie's like, All right, you gotta knock him out. I gotta be ready for that. What if I don't knock him out in the first round? And uh, I'm in another Silvera Lewis fight, and I gotta fucking get through being tired. Like you don't even. There's, there's no such, no time for being tired. No quit, no quit. Fuck, no quit? Oh god. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. You see me quit? Never. Fucking die right here. Right, yeah, keep these treadmills clean, bud. Look at this. Oh, you missed it. I just, I burnt the treadmill out. It just come up and I gotta let it rest <laughs> for a short period. Nice. So what's it feel like to be back on main event in Hamilton? It's been since the Vulcan fight, since your breakout fight, main event back in Hamilton. How's that feel? Oh, it's good. Like um, I find with Hamilton, the, you don't get as many, quite as many people, maybe. But it's such a tight, it's such a tight venue that, like, I don't know. It really feels like um, 
it feels like there's more people there because they're they're intense too. They they're the closest I've ever seen to a Cape Breton crowd. You know, they're they're actually like um, the ha the Hamilton the Hamilton crowd is like I don't know. They don't care who you're fighting. They just love to see like a good fight, especially a knockout. I mean, everybody does everywhere, but I don't know. It's it's a uh, it's exciting. I'm excited for sure. I think you made Hamilton fights excited after the last couple. Yeah, like, I don't think I've had a boring fight in Hamilton yet. No. I may have never had a boring fight. Just now, I will fight sometime maybe this year. Probably this year, I'm going to fight Badu Jack. I'll probably say this wrong. It's a place called Dubai. Does that sound right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to fight Badu Jack in Dubai. I'm going to put it in the universe now. I'm going to fight Chris Billum Smith in England. I'm going to fight, if Makabu doesn't retire, I'm going to fight him in the Congo. He's got to fight Noel for his mandatory. How do you see that fight going? I don't really know a lot about that Noel guy. I don't know. I, I don't know I, how I he, got, he wasn't really on the radar. That's why he popped out of nowhere. I can't say much because I, I haven't watched yeah. him. I know he's a mover because I was going to fight him and they said he's a mover, but that's all I know, right? That Noel guy? Yeah. When were they lining that up for you? That was supposed to be for maybe mandatory position. Okay. It's still a potential matchup. It's just he got the... He got it now. He got the Makabu shot yeah. first, right? That fight has to happen. I think it's going to a purse bid now. Okay, okay. Because yeah. I, I don't think they have a date for him, but I'm not sure. I'd have to look again. Yeah, but but I mean, that mm -hmm. list of cruiserweights... It, uh, it's a fun division, man. It's a division that's going to have all the eyes on it, too. Badu is, Jack is the guy. I messaged him three times now on Instagram. The first message was like two years ago. What did he say? Does, has he replied back to you? I've been I've been calling this guy out man to man for like for literally. A, see, this is the thing. Like, I don't I don't get the mic in my hand after a fight and start saying names. No. I don't want to like. You message them straight up. I yourself. message people. I could show you my my like the the fighters that I talk to, mm -hmm. guys in the top. I could I can rhyme them off. I message them, like just so me and them can talk because before a contract is ever made up before promoters talk, before managers talk, I want to know mm -hmm. man to man, will he fight me? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you wouldn't believe the fighters that when I DM them, they like... 100% ghost. Not even ghost, they just like... <laughs> they just say no. No. They say no, they have other plans, they, they're going to move up a weight division, they're going to move down a weight division, uh, they have fights scheduled, and then I go on box rack, and they got nothing scheduled. It's like, why can't you just say you don't want to fight? Like, I'm not afraid to to take a chance, get knocked out, lose, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, you, you're in boxing to fight the best, or what are you in it for? Like, this is the problem with boxing today. Like, this is why I literally just started watching, like, today's boxing. And I'm only doing it because, you know, when, when, when guys are interviewing me, they're like, oh, did you see, like, for example, today, Javante Davis's fight. Mm -hmm. I want to know who that is. Like, I just found out who that was on the weekend. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, like, I'm not following these guys because no. I just don't like the way they're doing it. And that's why, like, my team and I get along so well because we all have the same vision. We all have the same, like, mentality where, you know, if there's a list of 10 fighters, for me to, to pick from, let's say, you know, because you want to you get a top 10 opponent, they cost a lot of money, they can't happen just like this. I mm -hmm. can't just say, oh, I want to fight Badu Jack and the fight happens next week. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. You know, deals have to be made, money has to be brought to the table. Mm -hmm. But to make any other fight with like a top 100 guy or a top 50 guy, you know, they, they, they'll send me a list, let's say eight to 10 fighters. Well, I want to pick the toughest guy on that list with the best record, who fought the best opponents. He's going to give me the biggest challenge. You know, my coach wants the same thing. My promoters want the same thing. Everybody wants the same thing. Everybody wants me tested each fight. A little more, a little more, a little more. Maybe a huge test. Maybe I lose. Hey, I've already I've already done that. So That's why like, you were so good in that fight, man, because you were tested so much and so moved up so properly. It's one thing that bothers me with a lot of the fight. It's, it's not even the fighter's fault. It's their promoters. That's what I'm saying. Like, look at Rocky Marciano. Like, Look at the guys he fought coming up. Look at his record. Look at Joe Lewis. Look at these guys and look at their like, look at their stepping stone fights. They were guys on there like, I could tell you, Rocky Marciano's coming up. He fought a guy by the name of uh, 
Henry Matthews. His record was, I believe it was around 92 and three. Like, that's a stepping stone fight. Mm -hmm. Today, two and 93. Yeah, that's what these fighters around. are fighting. Yeah. Like, and then you get in a real fight, you know, because like, you can, like Teddy Atlas said it best, a, f a fighter's not in a fight until he faces some sort of adversity. It's not a fight. You go in there and punch a guy out. That's not a fight. That's just a beating. Anybody can beat people up. But, like, you're getting in boxing to be in fights, to be tested, to be challenged. Like, why are these guys ghosting me? Why don't they want to fight? Like, hey, I want them to knock me out. Come knock me out. Then I get to experience that, bounce back, come drop me. Then I get to beat the 10 count. I want to experience it all. I want to drop them. I want to knock them out. Maybe we have a rematch. Maybe we knock each other out. Then we have this trilogy. Like, but these things can't happen if two fighters aren't willing to fight. And I just feel like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put like, I might have something here. Like a gift card or something? Yeah, or yeah, like a card, yeah. Yes. Yeah, card, gift card, card that we don't use. Yeah. Card, card! <laughs> Where's the toy? Give me your toy. Come here. Give me your toy. Watch this. Say, sit. Okay, lay down. Bang. Bang. Go hold on. Lay down. Hold on. Bang. All the way. Bang. All right. Okay, here. Take it. <laughs> so how do you, so how do you feel about this fight coming up? Um, to be honest, I feel like I got to too pretty good. Uh, no, man, I feel pretty good. Like, uh, what? One of the good things that I do like about this fight is that I didn't take, you know, much time off. Um, Cause obviously we just had the fight in December and I pretty much was already back in the gym the week after the fight. It's kind of training through the holidays. Um, and yeah, for the most part, like the weight's pretty good. You know, um, I'm eating pretty good. Um, yeah, man, I mean, I feel pretty good. Like mentally, um, I feel like mentally every fight, like I'm just getting better and better. And the consistency is really good too. I feel like I'm, I'm just like seeing more, 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 more stuff. I'm seeing more shit in the ring, you know, like every every time. Um, but I really think, I mean, like although I wanted to knock out last fight, uh, I think it was good to get six rounds in, especially a guy who uh, he knows how to survive. Um, but yeah, man, I feel I feel really good about this fight coming up. I think I'm gonna, it's gonna be good, man. It's gonna be a lot of people there. Um, obviously, it's close to home, so you know, I'm gonna have a lot of fans out. Um, like, yeah, man, I feel, uh, I mean, I feel good. I, I'm ready to go tomorrow. Like, you know, I'm always in shape. I'm always, I'm always there mentally. Um, yeah. What else can I say? <laughs> yeah. Yo. Andre, what's going on? What's up, buddy? Keep up on your runs? Yeah. You keep up uh, right? you know, he, right now he's, uh, hey. Oh, he's going to the backyard. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, I think we went to the backyard. You want to overlook the gate? Yeah. Into the tw obviously you have to sit this this next fight out in Hamilton, mm. but uh, what what do you see happening uh, in 2023 for you? They were, they said something to me about April in Halifax, which would be it would be cool to go out there again. I didn't mind fighting in Nova Scotia, and uh, mm. my sister lives in Halifax, so that'd be cool. And um, you know maybe September October. I'm gonna be working a lot right up until September. So maybe if I could get a layoff, train all through October, maybe so there'll be something big in November, December. So, you know, I, I like, if, if there's gonna be a big fight for me this year, I'd, I'd prefer November, December, because that's when I'm gonna be off work, I have time to train. And what do you see for you uh, this year coming off your fight in, uh, in Cape Breton? Or, yeah, in Cape Breton. Yeah, uh, greatness, man. That's I like it. that. Oh, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah, same thing with the Antonio, like, obviously, we're gonna get as many fights as we can, um, I'm not too sure how many shows we're having exactly, but, uh, I plan on being on all of them, uh, for the most part, um, and yeah, we're, we're trying to go for a strap, uh, potentially, we are looking to drop in weight, too, so we might do a few catch weights throughout the year, and maybe sometime later on in the year, we might, you know, do a fight at 160, um, I'm cool with 168, but I feel like, you know, I, I could be, like, I was even telling Dan, Dan, all of this the other day, like, I, we, we could be really good at 168, but I feel like I could be, 
like world world champion, like a world class material at one sixty. And it's I never hit a sauna, man. Like I just eat good, do a big water cut. That's it. Like I don't think I've ever stepped to a sauna out of like any of my pro fights yet. Mm. So it's it's there, it's there. But you know, just a matter of like time, like when and how we're gonna do that, but yeah. That was good probably for some reason. I've never even seen my cousin Vinny. No? Yeah. I don't know if I have either. No. How do you two Italians not see my cousin Vinny? That's one movie. That's a. That's that's one movie, man. That's one movie. So, um, what do you think about St. Catherine's Boxing Club? Like being down here, and now you get to train with this guy. He's a little bit closer. Yeah. Oh, I think it's it's, it's nice, man. It's gritty. Kind of like when I walked in there, kind of reminded me of like when I first started uh, at Champions Boxing Club. Like it's a bit older uh, looking. You know, it's a uh, it's a bit gritty. There's a whole all these like posters on the wall from my. Like, decades ago and whatnot and like all their fighters and whatnot and it's it's nice man it's it kind of kind of gave me that like uh that feel when i first walked into the gym like 12 years ago right so uh, i kind of liked it man it was, it was nice it was nice cool yeah uh last what, what do you think about his fight coming up in hamilton we know unfortunately you guys sit this one up but what do you think about his fight coming up uh he's going up against a tough tough mexican three and oh uh who's coming to win yeah, I think I think they're moving him perfectly uh, with the fights he's taking. You know, he he uh, ha- had a fight against a tough Mexican, but then he fought a prospect from Montreal. Montreal's a serious fight town, right? They don't just take anybody on and say, "Yeah, go fight." Like if a coach taking you seriously from Montreal, you know he's good. He fought a guy from Montreal, knocked him out. Now the Mac get get a couple of t- fights in with tough Mexicans. So I mean that's. You know, they're moving them smart, so there's just another step. Nice. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Anything you guys want to say off to your fans? Um, hope you guys are buying your chicken soon, because, um, yeah, the venue is probably going to be sold out. I tried to get some front row tables, and it did not work out in my favor. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely get your tickets for sure. Um, and if anything, we will see you February 11th. I just hope everyone's doing well. Uh, February 11th, the fights, I'm not fighting, but I'm going to be there. But hope everybody's uh, keeping warm and doing good, you know? Cool, thanks.